Welcome to the Deals Behind the Money. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn, and I'm here with Chris Coyne from Coyne Brothers. And Chris, you're an angel investor, and maybe I should use the word angel in more than one way. Yes. Because you're, yes. you're looking for more than just financial rewards in the companies that you invest in. We are. We're looking certainly at financial rewards for my brother and I, who are the principals of the company, and for other investors that join us in the investments. But we believe very strongly that there are other rewards that come in investing, and those come in terms of progress made for people and for the planet. We can do a lot with money, a lot that's beneficial to the economy, but also that's beneficial to human progress. And the, most of the projects that we embrace are clean, they're green, they're high tech, uh, they promote jobs, they pro promote abundance models, but they also promote conditions that are beneficial to the human progress. So let's try to make this concrete. Talk about some of the companies that Coin Brothers has already invested in. Well, there are quite a number. Uh, let's talk about two. Uh, the first that comes to mind is Ostara, which is based in Vancouver. This is a company uh, whose technology emerged from the University of British Columbia. Amazing technology for withdrawing phosphorus and nitrogen from wastewater, and then converting that phosphorus into high-grade, high-quality uh, fertilizer pellets that are slow release. So it's an up-end uh, portion of the market. Uh, as a result, we have two streams of income, selling the reactors and selling the fertilizer and two streams of green, because it's great for the environment and pulling out these nutrients, and this fertilizer is very benign for growth on specialty crops and on country clubs, greens. So it's a huge project. Um, we were right at the beginning of the company. Uh, we helped close their first round, and I've been on the board for the last three years. Uh, we had our first sale in Portland. It's growing very, very rapidly. Another one that comes to mind is First Juice, and I really like this one because this I call a mission with a company rather than a company with a mission. Mm -hmm. This was developed by a dad, David Glasser, here in the New York area, because he was concerned about childhood obesity with his kids. And he had a beverage industry experience, so he created a whole line of organic, low sugar, uh, nutritious uh, juices, vegetable and fruit juice combinations. And now they're out in Whole Foods and Babies R Us and thousands of outlets the company is, is growing amazingly. They've had like a 250% return just in the last uh, couple of years. We helped close their first round. And in this case, I'm not on the board, but I have been very involved you know, with David. We very strongly support these types of organizations because they're pushing agendas that are really good for people and the environment. At the same time, they're going to make money. So to what extent do you think social networking and other Web 2.0 technologies will help advance this agenda of saving the planet? Well, hugely. The web now, particularly 2.0, touches millions and millions, hundreds of millions of people around the planet in ways that we could never have done before. And I know this. I, I'm in it now. I've been in it for 20 months, angel funding a company called Saber7, which has as its first offering Dorothy.com, which helps people connect to their dreams, their passions, and their future. It's very, very important. But how do you balance that equation? When, I mean, when you're thinking about investing in a company, to what extent do you do dil due diligence right. on its due goodness versus right, right, due right, diligence right. on the, will it make money? You have to do both. And obviously, we're not going to get involved in a project that doesn't have a workable, viable abundance model. So firstly, we look at all the financials, just like anyone would normally do, whether it's an angel or a venture capital organization. But then we look beyond that because typically a large number of companies meet that criteria. Then it's sorting out which one does the best, in our view, to advance the goals that are most important to us. You know, Greg and I have a foundation, and that foundation uh, was formed at the same time we formed our investment capital group. So the, the agendas of the commercial side and the philanthropic side in our lives bleed over. We're not going to do anything on the commercial side that doesn't advance the cause for kids, for the people for planet. And so we weigh that up very carefully. We have limited funds and we score it and we go for those that really resonate. Most important thing is the vision and the visionary. You know, I went to a conference recently where um, these themes were very much touched on. This was uh, aimed at foundation money managers, um, sponsored by right. Rockefeller Philanthropy Associates and Al Gore gave the keynote. Huge reception in the audience, a lot of enthusiasm for the idea of trying to do good and make money. Why do you think investors now are, might be more receptive to that investment thesis than in the past? Well, you know, we're, we're living in an age where structures of fear and greed are collapsing around us. 
I think more and more people are being drawn to an awakening that there's a lot more than just money uh, that enriches lives. I think all of us come to that privately as we move in our journey through life. But collectively, as a, com as, as a country, and maybe even as a planet, we're beginning to realize that, hey, there's other values here. And I travel all over the world. I go to places like Haiti, Niger, and Mali, where there's desperately poor people, and yet they're happy. So why are they happy and poor at the same time? So I'm looking at what Bhutan is looking at, like a gross national happiness. I'm looking at other benefits. I think more and more people are coming to that. I know that. I sense it. It's the zeitgeist. Well, I think that is the right note to end on. So thank you very much, Chris Coyne thank from you. Coyne Brothers. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Deals Behind the Money. I'm Mary Kathleen Flynn. Thank mm -hmm. you.